Hello, my name is Abdul Matasiri, and I would like to welcome you in another Boeing 737 video tutorial. In this video, I'd like to talk about takeoff in a crosswind. Now, please reference the takeoff section in the FCTM. It has a very good explanation for both uh, normal takeoff, crosswind takeoff, takeoff in a gusty wind, contaminated runway. Uh, but I elected to talk about the crosswind takeoff since I see some challenge for new pilots in this area. And uh, I'd like to cover three main points. The first one is the rudder application. Uh, the second is the forward pressure that you need to apply in the control column on the takeoff roll up to 80 knots. And the last point is the flight controls application into the wind. Uh, for this uh, video, I'm going to do uh, a static demonstration, meaning the airplane is not going to move. And you'll see me applying the rudder while the airplane is not moving. And of course, as you know, in the real airplane, you cannot do that. Uh, you cannot do any rudder application unless the airplane is moving or the captain is holding the uh, the tiller. Other otherwise, uh, you might uh, you might induce some damage to the to the nose wheel. Uh, the reason I'm doing a static demo is the PMDG is very sensitive here and I have tried to do the takeoff but I find myself deviate and maybe at the end I'll just uh, do the takeoff anyways uh, just to show you. But with that said, uh, let's start with the first point which is uh, rudder application. Now assuming that the, we have a crosswind from the left, so about 16 knots crosswind from the left. At the beginning of the takeoff roll you might find yourself need uh, needing to apply a large uh, rudder application and the reason for that is at the beginning of the takeoff roll you are relying on the nose wheel steering and then as the airplane picks up speed at 60 to 80 knots the rudder becomes effective and then you don't need uh, uh, that large application of the rudder so in the takeoff roll you find yourself starting with uh, a large input but then as the airplane uh, accelerates, you find yourself needing to decrease your rudder input. Now, you might do some corrections, of course. You might need some corrections uh, if you deviate from the center line. And let's assume that you went back to neutral rudder. Once you are back on the center line, remember that you need a rudder input. Since we have the wind from the left in this case, we'll be doing a right rudder input. So if you are done with any correction, even if you are doing to the left, let's say, and you return back to the center line, don't go to neutral rudder position because the airplane will deviate. Return back to a new neutral position. So the new neutral position is going to be the rudder that you need to apply to make sure that the uh, the airplane remains straight with the uh, with the runway. Uh, so it's going to be opposite to whatever the direction of the wind is. So again, you might need a large rudder input at the beginning, but then as the airplane accelerates, less rudder. If you do any correction. And you are done with the correction, make sure that you return back to uh, the rudder application opposite to the wind. Otherwise, as I said, you'll go neutral, you look up, and then you find the airplane deviate uh, because of the wind veining, and then you might find yourself needing to do a correction on the other side. So just remember, even a small rudder input, as long as you have some rudder input in the right direction, uh, you'll be uh, much better in controlling the airplane and uh, a small rudder input should be your neutral uh, rudder position for you for this takeoff uh, as long as you have a crosswind. If you have a straight headwind or wind calm then of course the neutral position is going to be a neutral rudder but crosswind from the left the neutral position is going to be some input with the right rudder and the opposite is true. If you have a crosswind from the left a uh, correction from the right you'll be applying left rudder and the neutral position for this situation is going to be some left rudder input. So this is the first point. The second point is the FCTM talks about applying some light forward pressure on the control column. So I'm going to just move it up to 80 knots. And the reason for that is to increase the effectiveness of the nose wheel steering. Because as I said, the rudder will become effective between 60 and 80 knots. And up to that you need to make sure that the uh, you have the best nose wheel steering to be able to control the airplane. Now, with that said, what is light forward pressure? There is no exact definition for that. 
Now, my personal interpretation, my personal understanding, and from my experience, uh, I, I think it can be done in two ways. The first one is you apply some forward pressure on the control column up to the first movement. As soon as you have some movement, stop. That should be enough forward pressure. And then at 80 knots, you release whatever forward pressure you have. The uh, second technique, which I do, which I utilize most of the time, is I apply forward pressure on the control column, but not to the point that the control column physically move. So I grasp the uh, I grasp the uh, the control column firmly. I apply some forward pressure, but not to the point that the control column moves. And again, at eight knots, I release uh, that forward pressure. Now, please avoid doing anything like this. This is too much of a forward pressure. It's not needed, and it's not uh, in compliance with the procedure. Uh, the other thing I have seen some pilots will go full uh, pitch down on the control column before setting the takeoff thrust and then releasing and then going with halfway or so. Again, this is not uh, a procedure that I am aware of. So light forward pressure, I suggest you do it in either two ways. The first one is apply some forward pressure on the control column as soon as it starts move. That should be enough. Maintain that pressure until 80 knots and then release that pressure. Or the other way, which is apply some forward pressure, but not to the point that the control column move. For the third and last point, which is when to apply the flat controls. Now the FCTM talks about application of the flat controls in a crosswind. And it says to start with neutral uh, flat controls. And then apply as much uh, flat controls as you need to the point uh, to maintain uh, wings level. Sorry. Uh, again, this is the FCTM. From my experience, unless you have a very, very strong crosswind, you don't need to apply any uh, flight controls into the wind up to V1. And the reason for V1 is uh, I use it as my trigger, as a reminder, let's say. So when I hear V1, I start applying flight controls into the wind. How much flight controls do I apply? It should be relative to how much uh, rudder input you have. So you are doing a cross control because you'll be transitioning into a side slip for the uh, for the rotation so if you have a large input in the rudder then a relatively large input of flight controls into the wind if i have a light crosswind a small rudder input then a small input of the flight controls into the wind uh, now the fctm uh, talks about or uh, it's kind of a caution or warning if you like it's not warning but something to watch out for which is to avoid large flat controls inputs in the takeoff roll. The reason for that is uh, if you exceed two units here on the uh, flat controls column, the uh, flat spoilers will start deploying. And uh, if you have a very large uh, flat controls input, the deployment of the spoilers may affect the airplane performance for takeoff. And they are talking about even uh, increasing the chance of uh, getting into a uh, tail strike. So here is the uh, paradox. There is the dilemma now. I want to say apply as much flight controls as you need into the wind, but at the, at the same time, I need to say uh, as minimum as possible. So as much flight controls as you need, but at the same time, try to use as minimum flight controls input into the wind as possible. But in all cases, if you have a crosswind takeoff, in the rotation, you need a rudder input and a flight controls input. This is too much. So smaller flight controls input. So you need both the rudder input and the flight controls. Again, you'll be transitioning into a side slip. So the airplane starts to lift, rotate. Okay, so let's assume that we are rolling on the, on the runway now. And I have some rudder input. I'm doing some correction. And let's say I got it under control with this much of a rudder input. And then I heard V1. I start applying some flight controls into the wind, rotate pulling with the with both application and then 
uh, controlling it as much as, as you need, of course, but trying to minimize the flight controls input as much as possible. Now, when do you get out of the side slip? The FCTM talks about taking the, uh, the rudder and the flight controls at the same time. In my opinion, that will result in uh, a sudden transition, let's say. So uh, a smoother way of doing it, which I do, is once a uh, safe altitude, at a safe altitude from the runway, for me at least going to be 100 or above, and I do it in two uh, phases or two steps. The first one, smoothly releasing the rudder uh, input. And then maintaining the flight controls into the wind slightly, uh, I don't know, there's a delay that you need to do to make sure that the airplane will uh, point into the right direction for you and then you take it off and start controlling the, the airplane as, uh, as a normal takeoff. The whole thing is dynamic, of course, as you know. So even if I attempt uh, a demonstration here for the takeoff, you'll see the flight controls uh, moves all around and the rudder application up to the rotation. So once the rotation is up, I don't think you need to do much changes of the rudder until the point that you want to take the uh, side slip out and then again smooth and slow uh, changes to the rudder and then delay and a smooth again and slow uh, movement of the flight controls should result in the best smoothest transition uh, from the runway into the air in a crosswind uh, situation. Approaching three, four. So that's it uh, for this video as usual if you have any questions comments or concerns i'll be more than happy to respond uh, to your uh, questions and uh, until uh, next time this is abdul mati as usual you should say flying and smooth landing thank you for watching